For this dairy experiment, I'm going to be using the basic hard cheese recipe as found in the Junket Rennet tablet box. Now this is the same recipe that I used for the feta cheese, but with a few variations. You take one gallon of milk, or four liters, and this should yield about one pound of cheddar-style cheese. You may use skim milk, you may use whole milk, you may use 2% milk, but the richer the milk, the richer the cheese. This will be a white cheese, no color added. I suppose you could add color if you want it, but why bother? The ingredients that you will need are one gallon of fresh milk, the fresher the better, two to three teaspoons of active bacterial culture, buttermilk is what I used, a half cup of plain yogurt will also work, half a tablet of rennet, some sea salt, and also some calcium chloride. The calcium chloride is to ensure that the milk coagulates when you have store-bought processed pasteurized milk. It sometimes destroys the properties in the milk that can cause it to coagulate when you add the rennet. If you're using fresh farm milk, that's not an issue, but with store-bought milk, uh, it can be an issue. You're going to want a thermometer, you're going to want a whisk, you're going to want sterilized stainless steel pot with a lid, a long-handled stainless steel knife, a strainer, a some sort of form to put your cheese in. What I used is a stainless steel utensil holder that I found at a restaurant supply store that has holes in, in the top and the sides and, and works really well and costs a whole lot less than a specialized cheese form from a, from a cheese supply company. And you'll want a cheese press. Now, I really cheaped out with my cheese press, and you'll see that in a moment. You might want to invest, especially if you're going to be making a lot of cheese in a, in a decent cheese press. So, step one, you inoculate the milk. The evening before you plan to make cheese, you warm a gallon of your milk up to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20 degrees Celsius, in the sterilized pot. And it's very important to sterilize all your equipment because any any contamination will quickly grow in your cheese and, and ruin all your hard work so make sure everything you use is sterilized properly thoroughly blend in your quarter cup of buttermilk again I used a half cup of buttermilk just because you cover your inoculated milk with a sterilized lid and you incubate overnight you let it sit out at room temperature and let the buttermilk do its job uh, the next morning you gently warm the milk back up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius and you dissolve the half a rennet tablet in a quarter cup of water. You mix in your quarter teaspoon of uh, calcium chloride and make sure you buy food grade calcium chloride into your cold milk before you heat it up. Stir the dissolved rennet into the 86 degree Fahrenheit milk to mix thoroughly. Cover it, let it sit undisturbed for an hour or more in a warm place at room temperature. Be patient, could take a while. As a matter of fact, I let it, I mixed in my rennet and then I went to work for an eight hour workday. So I let mine sit for a very long time and that, that might have been part of the cause of the sort of odd coagulation that occurred for me. Don't disturb it, just let it sit. Don't stir it. If you initially stir in the rennet, just let it sit. What you're looking for is a clean break. A clean break is when your milk congeals, it almost becomes jello-like. You can put your finger in, make sure your hands are clean, obviously, into the milk and lift and it'll be gelled enough to break cleanly when you lift your finger. If, if that hasn't occurred yet, let it sit. Let it go for a while longer. Might take a couple more hours. It's hard to say. A lot have, has to do with, with the type of milk you're using. Who knows, the atmospheric conditions. Be patient. Once you get a clean break, once you're com confident that your curd has set well, and you're ready to cut the curd. Cut the curd with a long knife. The, the instructions say begin at the edge of the pot and cut straight to the bottom. Cut repeatedly parallel to the first cut but increase the angle of the knife and, and then you place the pot over a low fire. I assume that means low heat. Uh, you stir the curd with uh, a clean hand. You stir the curd gently, moving it up from the bottom as you heat up the milk again. Cut the larger curds that appear. Don't mash them, don't squeeze them, just keep stirring. Continue for 15 minutes to prevent the curd from clumping together or overheating at the bottom. And when the curds get to 92 degrees Fahrenheit or 34 degrees Celsius, or if you want a harder cheese, heat it up a little bit more to 39 degrees Celsius, 102 Fahrenheit, 
that will give you a firmer cheese. You separate the curds and whey, you stir and maintain at 92 degrees Fahrenheit until the curds have contracted to a consistency of firm scrambled eggs. Now honestly my my curd was already at this consistency and already had, uh, had contracted by the time I started this process so I didn't spend 15 minutes stirring. Uh, you remove from the stove and you let it stand for 10 minutes to cool down a little bit. The curd should sink in the whey and then you pour off the whey through the strainer. You can save it for something else if you want. The way I, I made uh, chocolate whey liqueur, which I'll also post a video for later, which was delicious. I've, I've been told that you can make a hot sauce from the whey, you can dry the whey to make whey powder. It's a high protein, very nutritious product that uh, it's a shame just to dump it down the sink. You add your salt. I'm using Mediterranean sea salt. You sprinkle two teaspoons of salt over the curds and then you work it in with your hands and uh, any additional whey that you produce or that you draw out of the curds when you're working with your hands you can you can pour off and then you press the cheese so what I've done is I've lined my stainless steel utensil holder that I'm using for the cheese form I've lined it with uh, cheesecloth you take the curds still warm and you press them into the can and press them in quite firmly and you fold the corners of the cheesecloth over the top you put something on top to even out the pressure. I used the lid from a yogurt container. And then you place a heavy weight on top of the cheese curds. And let it sit at room temperature for 12 hours. Now, as you can see, I've improvised. The important thing is to maintain a constant, steady pressure on the cheese curds for 12 hours. If you leave it overnight, the next morning, you remove and unwrap the cheese from the press and this is what mine looks like it's uh, I, I put it back in and pressed it again the first time through it was a little bit soft I thought the second time around it, it had it was a lot firmer so I probably pressed mine for 24 hours all together you unwrap it you rub it with the outside with salt the salt I think is to prevent bacteria from growing on the surface uh, you rewrap in fresh cheesecloth and you place it on a rack in the refrigerator so what you're going to want to do is replace the bandage, the, the cheesecloth bandage, every every day, maybe even a couple of times a day for the first while. And every time you do it, rub it with salt, replace the bandage, put it back in the fridge. You don't want it to dry out, but you don't want it to remain too moist. So fine. I, I, I took a Tupperware container that was quite a bit larger than the cheese. I put it in the Tupperware container and I let it sit in the fridge wrapped in the cheesecloth. Ultimately, I let it sit for about a month. You can obviously... You can, you can let it go for longer. The longer you wait, the sharper the cheese is going to be. Personally, I don't have that much patience, so after a month of sitting in the fridge, I got it out, I cut it up, and I ate it. And it was delicious. It was a very, very nice cheese. It was, uh, had, had a very buttermilk taste to it. It, it was a good experiment. I, I think, I'm not sure if how much money you save making your own cheese. Uh, when I go to the local market here, you can buy very inexpensive cheese. If you want to go for cheap cheese, you can, you can buy cheese that costs you less than the raw ingredients for this cheese. If, if you go for a more artisan cheese, a locally produced artisan cheese, you're probably going to end up paying about twice to three times what this, this cheese cost. So the savings aren't tremendous, but the educational value and the taste are, are both outstanding. And, and uh, I recommend it as an experiment and as something fun to do.